Hello everyone and welcome back. Welcome to another Crafty Decor Adventure. Olivia of Olivia's Rant at Co. And in today's video, I am so excited to share with you guys 10 DIY Dollar Tree Decor Crafts. So this is going to be another episode in my Home Sweet Home series. I love to share with you guys how you can make your home's boutique gorgeous on a budget. Hey, listen, don't forget to subscribe to this YouTube channel and comment down below so you guys can enter my $100 Hobby Lobby gift card giveaway. I love to spoil you guys. And hey, also don't forget to follow me over my Olivia's Rant at Co. Facebook page. We are having so much fun crafting and decorating. I even have a free little group page. You guys can post photos of your home decor and DIY projects. It is a place for positivity and for us just to gather around the love of crafting and decorating. So thank you guys for, again for being here. Let's go ahead and hop into the video. Without further ado, plug in those glue guns, get out your glitter and paint, and let's get to crafting. The first Dollar Tree DIY, I took this plastic Easter bucket and I had previously chalk painted it white and let it dry. That way we could go ahead and move on to the second step of this craft just because the chalk painting does take a little bit to dry but you guys get the point so you're just going to chalk paint your plastic bucket white let it dry do two coats if you like but I only did one now I'm taking some Mod Podge and one of these little Dollar Tree sponge tools and I'm giving a generous layer of Mod Podge what I want to create is a really beautiful kind of Mackenzie Child's or floral basket in inspired little bucket here so I'm taking this cocktail nap napkin and the cocktail napkin is available on the McKinsey Child's website now they're about five or six dollars a packet per napkins which that's kind of pricey so you guys could grab some napkins at Dollar Tree they have some pretty floral ones there as well as some Easter ones or you could be a little splurgy and grab some of these napkins and I will tell you that these napkins have lasted me with my crafting projects since last summer I've been using them you guys probably have seen them with some of my other DIYs so they may be worth the little bit of price you might pay just to make these dupes. I've done teapots, I've done floral planters, now I'm doing baskets and bunnies, um, and I'm almost out of this particular pattern. So anyway, long story short, there's the 411 on the napkins, and I'm just going to go ahead, and this is actually just one napkin. I cut it in half, and I didn't peel off the inner layer part of the napkin. I just went ahead and Mod Podge straight onto that. It does make it a little bit lumpy, but I feel like I get more of the vibe vibrant color on this. And you could also cut out the flower individually if you want it to be really particular. Um, but this is just a fun little craft for my crafting studio. So I wasn't super particular about it. So I just went ahead and Mod Podged away. I'm doing one layer underneath the napkin and then one layer over the napkin. And then I am going in and cleaning up the top part of my work here with some more of this Waverly white chalk paint. And I do love the chalk paint because it does pretty much stick to just about everything. Um, and so that's really all there was to this craft. And then you have a really fabulous little uh, bucket on a budget, you know. Um, you guys might even have some little plastic Easter pails hanging around. And I just used some little um, craft snips or wire snips to pull the little plastic handle off. I didn't want that on there, but you guys, guys could always wrap the handle maybe with some pretty ribbon if you wanted to leave the handle on and just have like a decorative Easter basket. It. Um, so there's a where you have that. And I can't help but smile. Do you know how much I love you? You put my favorite song on. To style this super adorable floral basket, I popped a little um, basket inside of it upside down and then just overlaid some moss on top of that. I put in some of those Dollar Tree speckled eggs and then topped it with this cute little floral bunny. And I will share with you all how to do these floral bunnies very soon. And then here's just a sneak peek of what we're going to have going on in this video. I am so ready for some spring colors. I just felt like we really needed to go for it with some spring vibes. So I hope this really gets you guys this creative juices flowing. Grab some Mod Podge, some glue, some glitter, and let's do some happy crafting. I'm so here for it. I hope you guys are as well. And we just sing along. Can't help but feeling just loving this moment. Can we stay here? 
For the next Dollar Tree DIY, I want to make an Easter garland using some of this Dollar Tree vase filler and then some of these cute little styrofoam bunnies. You're also going to need, need a needle and thread. And I actually was inspired for this craft by Bargain Bethany. Go check out her channel, you guys. She has amazing DIYs and she's super creative, but she did one of these for Valentine's Day. And some of you all even posted some um, different garlands like this in my group page. So I thought, I'd better go for it. Might as well um, go for it. Better late than never, right guys? So you just take the little needle and thread and you're going to thread your styrofoam balls through. And then once you get to the bunny part, you'll just thread that through the neck of your bunny. And I will tell you that when um, I'm threading my styrofoam balls through, I kind of have to press the ball down on top of the needle and thread because they don't go on like super easily. Be careful, you know, not to prick yourself. Um, and I did just use regular threads. So we will see how it holds up. I was able to thread several on here and I did do about 16 of them. Um, and I tried to stay with a pattern color, yellow, purple, pink, blue, yellow, purple, pink, blue. I kept repeating that pattern in my mind so I didn't mess up. Um, and then I did have, you know, one or two pop off here and there, not the end of the world. Um, and I didn't let too much thread um, go out on my needle. Like I kept it pretty short. And then as I moved along, I kind of pushed them down very gently. I hope that makes sense what I'm saying um, because I didn't want the, the thread to get kind of tangled up. But I wanted to create this super fabulous little garland. I think that these would be great for an Easter Christmas tree or Easter tree. If you guys are doing an Easter tree, I'm going to end up using it on my mantle. Now, once I was all finished, and I used up almost the majority of my little beads from two packs of beads and I used the large ones um, and then my bunnies then I'm just gonna add some hot glue to the end where the thread is to kind of seal it off and then to make sure it's double sealed on there I'm just gonna take this little Dollar Tree ribbon and hot glue that to the end of the bead and that's also gonna give me something that I can tie this on to my mantle if I need to be able to tie it on to something and I really totally wasn't for sure how he's gonna use it so I wanted to make sure that I had something on there now here's another little idea is you guys can use some of those hanging like little eggs or whatnot this was just off of one of those hanging Dollar Tree signs with that cute little bunny you guys could hot glue that on the end and use it like in a th three tiered tray so here is how I used mine. It was a rather large garland because this mantle is rather large, but look at how stinking adorable this is. And you guys, it only cost like $3 to do. Those little packs of bunnies had, it looks like I think about maybe six to eight in them. And I think they would even be super adorable now that I'm thinking about it to go back in and like maybe detail paint the little ears pink and maybe even put like a little bow on them. Um, but just for this video, sake I was trying to get this out for you guys and just make sure I could get all the crafts in in one day and to be honest with you I have to give props to my daughter because she actually was home from school um, on a snow day and she helped me finish stringing the garland so I could move on to another craft to be able to show you guys but look at how adorable and just it's such a happy garland um, and great memories as well so for the next DIY I'm going to use one of those little styrofoam bunnies now these are similar to the small bunnies that I use used in um, the garland and you can see my daughter there she is off to the side helping me finish that garland um but this is the larger styrofoam garland and I'm just going or bunny <laughs> and I'm going in with some Mod Podge and I'm going to Mod Podge the front part of the bunny and I've taken one of those cocktail napkins and the napkins are actually from Mackenzie Childs um you can get a pretty good pack of them and they are about six dollars though they're a little bit pricey for napkins but you guys they have lasted me for a year and I've done so many craft projects with them so it's a little bit pricey but it's kind of nice to have these really pretty floral napkins but I will tell you I also found some pretty little rose napkins at Dollar Tree so just keep your eye out grab something you can look in Target you could look at Tuesday morning they all have beautiful really pretty napkins look in their party section but you're just going to mod podge a layer of mod podge onto your styrofoam bunny and then just gently mod podge it on top of the bunny and the little styrofoam brush I'm using is also from Dollar Tree 
So for the bunny, I'm just cutting out the individual, um, you know, florals. And I honestly, I need you guys' help because I may do another one or two of these, but let me know if you guys like it just with the, um, uh, bunny with <laughs> the florals on this one back side. I ended up doing the entire bunny. Of course, you guys know I just love tons of florals. So, and I felt like, you know, the styrofoam was just kind of empty without it. But now looking back on it I'm, and watching this video back, I'm like, oh, it did look kind of cute with just part of it done. So, comment down below and let me know what you guys think because you guys kind of saw it mid process. Um, and it's funny because I've actually gotten used to crafting kind of up upside down and backwards when I craft for you guys. And I usually can see my project through um, the screen from what I'm doing. So a lot of times you guys can have a better view of what I'm doing. Anyway, I'm just Mod, Podge, Mod Podging gently a smaller piece now onto the ear to really give it that blooming floral bunny effect. And if you guys pop onto the McKenzie Child's website, they have really, really beautiful um, Easter decor pieces. But for me, they're just a little bit too pricey to spend on a seasonal decor piece. So I really want to share with you guys some really nice dupes that we can do that are in our budget and that can be really fabulous and fun. And again, just splurging on these napkins are really nice if you guys have it in you and you can just order them directly off their website. And again, I've been using this one little package of cocktail napkins for over a year now. Now I am running out to be honest with you, but I do have some of the little black ones left over. So once I'm done with the white ones, I'll probably switch to the black ones. So have fun with it, get creative, use what you have and go for it. <laughs> And here are my blooming floral bunnies. Oh my goodness, they are just a burst of sunshine and array of color and springtime goodness. And I did use a waterproof, waterproof <laughs> Mod Podge from Michaels. So they can easily be just kind of wiped off if they get like this dusty moss on them and hopefully be year used for years to come. I think they're just really lovely and just a happy burst of spring in this beautiful Easter display. Comment and let me know what you guys think. I always love to hear your thoughts on everything and if you guys will be crafting one of these adorable little bunnies. With you everything is complete. Do you know how much I love you? I now for the next Dollar Tree DIY, I'm going to take a large piece of Dollar Tree poster board or foam board and then I'm just taking this pie pan and I'm going to make a large oversized kind of bunny. So I'm also taking this smaller pan and I'm trying to use these pans to kind of um, make an outline of a rabbit. So don't be too hard on me. This is the first time I've ever done this. This idea just popped into my head. I was like, oh, it'd be so adorable to have a large pink bunny in my little display. And so I'm kind of using this little headband like as a drawing um, springing off point and I'm just freehanding this. And so I just made my little rounds here and then I'm kind of drawing um, some little cute uh, bunny ears. So, and then I'm just gonna take a craft tool to be able to cut this out. And I do wanna let you guys know that I put um, a little puppy pad underneath this so I don't scratch my table. So if you guys are doing this like on a dining room table, make sure you have something underneath it to protect your surface. And so if you give it a nice good cut, you should be able to get it cut all in like one little cut. And this is a pretty like sharp, I think it's a box cutter. I don't know, I robbed it from Mr. Romantic's um, uh, tool stash. And so again, don't be too hard on me on the shape of my bunny. Um, this is my first time doing this. I know I'll get better as I go along. So I'm just using some white and pink fuchsia paint. It's just like that little pink apple barrel craft paint that you buy at Walmart. It's in the fuchsia color. And then I um, watered it down with some white paint. Um, and then I'm just painting it pink, kind of, kind of to be like a little cute Easter peep 
pink bunny is my idea. Um, I was going to do eyes on it and make it the front of the bunny, but I got nervous because I felt like maybe the shape of it was a little bit off. So I thought, well, I'll just do like a bunny, um, a big giant bunny head form and then do the bunny butt like with a cute little um, tail on it. So I'm just having fun with it and painting it. And sometimes I think that's really just a fun thing to do. Now, I think that these would be super fun if you guys are doing also um, like a classroom or a church display. Okay, so the next thing I wanna do is take one of those oversized, these come also in the Dollar Tree um, Easter section. They're just an oversized like little um, cotton tail. And I shared these with you guys in my haul. So how adorable, oh my goodness. I popped that right on there and then I ended up adding a bow too. Okay, I felt like it just needed something more besides just the cotton tail. And then I ended up um, adding another bow to that to kind of mix in with the decor. So I'm just taking the ribbon and looping it over on itself and tying it off in the center and then hot gluing that. And then I added that cute little like pink peep um, piece off of the headband to the center of that. So I don't know, you guys, it's definitely an interesting, cute little bunny. And it kind of had a weird reflection, but it is just more flat pink. Comment, let me know what you guys think about this. I think it needs like a little um, friend, like a yellow one or a purple one, some more little oversized bunnies to go in the little bunny garden of fun. I'm loving this moment. Can we stay here forever? And then for the next Dollar Tree DIY, I want to share with you guys how to make a wonderful oversized Dollar Tree garland. So I'm taking these two garlands from Dollar Tree and they're just like these little viney garlands and they're four foot long. And I'm just going to take and I'm going to twist them together. And this is going to make what they call like a working garland. Um, and I'm going to take four rolls of Dollar Tree mesh and I'm starting out with this cute little rainbow color. And then I'm just going to take some pipe cleaners and I'm going going to tie the rainbow colored mesh on with my pipe cleaner and I'm just going to twist it around twice. Um, so if you guys, you know, watch people that make really pretty, beautiful, over the top garlands, they always start out with like a working um, <clears throat> Uh, base and so this is kind of a really great working base this would also be great to use if you had like a Christmas tree garland because then you could just twist the evergreens over on each other um, but that's okay we're just going to work with what we have here and so I'm just going about every 10 to 12 inches and making like little poofs with my deco mesh and then taking that little um, piece of pipe cleaner and tying that off. So this is super easy, you guys. You just run that um, deco mesh all the way down and it goes the entire length of the eight foot garland. So if you have one roll of deco mesh, that's gonna go completely down the roll of the eight foot garland. And then I'm going to layer a layer of blue on top of that. So you take the blue and you overlay it on top of it and just tie it off. And I'm kind of creating little poofs as I go along. So just like a little poof, it's super easy. Um, there's no real, you know, fanciness to this at all. You guys can totally do this. I promise you grab some deco mesh and take a deep breath and just have fun, you know, making a fun, a little poofy garland. And then the next thing I want to do is I got a little impatient. So I decided to double up on my pink and purple mesh. So again, this is the same process. I'm just taking the mesh and tying it on with the little pipe cleaner, poofing it out and then tying it on as I go along. And then it's spaced about 10 to 12 inches between each each little tie and so you just that's how you make those deco mesh garlands it's so easy and so once you have the base of your garland you guys can get creative with this and then this is the next part of the DIY is making your bow so I'm gonna make an Olivia bow is what I call this for reference point and I'm measuring 14 inches on this ribbon this is Dollar Tree ribbon it's wired and you're gonna take the ribbon and loop it over on itself four times you're gonna trim it off and then just set it aside and I'm gonna make this so easy for you guys we're not not even going to notch it in the center <laughs> and then I'm going to make it a little bit smaller so make it like about a 10 inch or 12 inch um, if we start at 14 go down about two inches so make it about 12 inch 
for the next bit of ribbon um, and then cut that off and then layer that on top of your next one and then I like to usually do the next one about two inches smaller than that so go about 10 inches or you know 11 uh, it's about two inches smaller sometimes I just eyeball it and then you're just gonna layer that on top of there and then you can take a pipe cleaner you're gonna pinch it in the center so you find your center you want your bow to be as symmetrical as possible um, you can notch it in the center if you've learned how to make this bow with me before or you can take a shortcut with me today and just tie it off in the center um, be careful when you're pulling out your loops because you don't want your bow to fall apart but I just wanted to show you guys a little shortcut here okay trim that off and then you can dovetail your ends by cutting a triangle don't leave those ends all floppy and not cute and now you can just go ahead and pull your loops out now this is the part that i always tell you guys is the secret to your bow making is giving those loops a good pretty nice healthy fluffing you want to fluff those bows give it a good fluff it up and then you can pop it into your garland tie it on with a little pipe cleaner and you guys are set to go wow that's super easy now i made two more of these in addition to this one to put on either end of my garland. I usually like to make my bows and add them once I have my garland set on to my mantle because my mantles are different sizes. I have one in my little crafting studio. It's a little faux mantle that Mr. Romantic built and I'm completely sorry for the wonkiness of my camera angle. Benji Bear was probably out there um, being my creative director, and I'll just blame it on Benji Bear, but I know it was me. Y'all, anyway, I'm taking this piece of little greenery here. This is like a piece of lamb's ear garland. I got that at Michael's, and I'm going to tie that into my garland. I'm securing it on there with some pipe cleaners as well. So you can see it kind of flopped off. You'll just take a pipe cleaner and run it through either end of it and then tie it on. And I do have little nails on each end of my garland and in the center to hold this um, monstrosity on, this whole thing on. <laughs> I suggest though don't use nails use command strips it's a lot more efficient and it won't damage your um, mantle so anyway now I'm taking these little Dollar Tree wisteria branches and I'm just going to gently lay them kind of underneath here I'm still playing with this mantle so I didn't really want to wire anything on because I'm gonna go back in and probably tweak it or pull things out and do different things with it I'm just not totally for sure so they lay perfectly on there, which was totally fine by me. The next thing I'm doing is popping in these cute little pink little berries. And I didn't even take these apart. I just popped them directly in there. Again, I'm just really kind of playing with this for now, you guys, because I really want to see how I feel about it, live with it, fluff it up around, you know. And then I also grabbed some lily bundles. I ended up cutting the lilies apart because I felt like they were just way overpowering on that top part there. And I also wanna be able to have space on the actual shelf mantle part to put things in. So here's how it looks. And then you guys can see, I also put in that little um, faux beaded garland but it's definitely an explosion of color and goodness. Now our little egg topiary, we did two DIYs back as well as the cute little um, checkered bunny and um, some of the other DIYs that you guys see have been in some other videos. So go check out the rest of my I Love Spring series. We are springing along, looking forward to the future with so much joy. And I'm so thankful for you guys. I know so many of you have been keeping busy crafting and decorating and I'm seeing so many of your posts on my group page so thank you I love seeing what y'all are up to and you guys keep me motivated and everybody is just so positive so I hope y'all are loving this as always comment and let me know what was your favorite DIY in this video which one will you be recreating now I need to know for the secret question I do have a hundred dollar totally dazzled dot com give a giveaway gift card giveaway okay so i'm giving away some bling jewels the giveaway is going to be announced saturday so make sure you guys check my socials for when i'm going to announce that giveaway winner but i need to know 
when do you guys stop making Easter baskets for your kiddos? I'm still making them and my kiddos are like teenagers and even into college. So um, I would love to hear what you guys are up to and if you guys are still making Easter baskets for your kiddos, even when they're grown. I love y'all and I thank you so much for being here again. It is a true blessing and an honor. And I love hearing what you guys have to say in the comments. I think we had a really fun one last time when I asked you guys about bunnies and if you ever had a pet bunny and if you ever wanted one. So that was a really fun comment section. So anyway, thank you guys again and I hope you guys had a blast and I cannot wait for more crafting and decorating with everybody and I can't wait to see everybody's posts and what you're going to be making in our group page. Talk to you. For the first Dollar Tree DIY, we're going to create a super adorable French country floral garden planter wall hanging. So I'm going to take these two garden gates from Dollar Tree and you're going to flip them upside down and then push them up against each other, line them up, and then just take some of that Dollar Tree floral wire. And at the base of each one, they'll have little tiny grooves that you can thread the floral wire through. And you want to thread the floral wire through through about five to six times along the base of the garden gate. That way you can have your garden gate be nice and sturdy. You don't want anything flopping off or flying away. So you can see I'm just taking the little piece of wire, threading it through, then flipping it over and twisting it really well on the back and then just taking some scissors or you can also use wire cutters to trim it off. And this is how it should look after you have it all secure on there. And then I just wanted to take these two little cute little garden planters. You find these at Dollar Tree as well and some white spray paint. Now I spray painted these and then ran out of my spray paint so I just had to use the backup option and that was going ahead and chalk painting these. I'm going to tell you this chalk paint that I used it took about three to four coats. <laughs> so either have a lot of spray paint on hand or be very patient with your chalk paint. But once I had it all chalk paint I was ready to roll. So now that I have everything painted, I'm going to go ahead and use this little craft knife and just push holes into the top part of my little planter. Now be careful, um, the craft tool is a bit sharp, but I'm just going to poke two holes on each side and you're going to want to poke the holes on the top of your planter. And then I just took a bit of sandpaper and I very gently sandpapered the front part of my little garden planter. I wanted the little French saying to show through. And I think I'm just now realizing that one of mine is a French saying and one of them is in English. How funny and cool is that? I don't think I've ever found the English version. Um, usually I always pick up the French version. So anyway, Dollar Tree is always blowing my mind, you guys. I'm taking some black craft paint and I want to make this appear to be kind of a vintage enamel wear tin. So I'm just using a little craft sponge which has definitely seen better days and I'm running just a tiny dab of black paint around the base and the top and then I even use just an itty tiny bit on the front of this. Now it's always best to use a little bit less paint and you can always go back in for more. But have fun with this. Paint it whatever color suits your fancy. I'm going to add a generous amount of hot glue to the bottom and use some of that Dollar Tree Styrofoam. I want to create a really beautiful spring floral arrangement. It is so time for spring dreaming in my home. I'm going to take some of the Dollar Tree onion grass and I did clip it apart and then I began to add some really beautiful little Dollar Tree lilacs. I also had some Walmart lavender left over from last season. I've heard rumor that the Dollar Tree lavender isn't super great this year. Um, my girl at Chic on the Cheap, Sarah Jane, said definitely check Walmart for your lavender. So if you're a shabby chic French farmhouse girl or just love to decorate with some pretty lavender, definitely check on that. I did go ahead and add some pretty white flowers to the top of this. Again, just making it a fun spring floral. Use whatever colors and florals suit your fancy. <laughs> Now 
now I'm just going in with some of that Dollar Tree Celsius grass. I kind of want to poke that in and around the little spot that I didn't get quite enough florals in. You could also use any of the little Dollar Tree greenery or moss. And then I'm going to go ahead and attach them to my garden gate. So I'm just going to take this Dollar Tree floral wire and I'm going to cut it and then thread the floral wire through the back to create like a little loopy hook. And then you can just go ahead and begin to tie that on to your garden planter. So this turned out so fun and fabulous. So I'm just twisting it on to that center rung. Right here, you can see, see the center rung and go ahead and feel free to paint the back of yours. But this is going to be probably hanging on a wall somewhere. And here is how the finished product looked. Okay, so for this video, I just went ahead and stood it up. You can see my little lamp kind of hanging over. I stood it up and I added a picture frame around it to give it a little bit of security. This would hang very nicely on a wall if you use two nails on either side. And I incorporated it into this French a farmhouse French country look back by popular demand the last video I did for you was also a French farmhouse French country look and so many of you all requested me to do another French country video so here it is a back by popular demand I hope you all are loving it and you get some fun ideas for how to add some of these beautiful kind of French farmhouse um, techniques or ideas into your home and and then for the next Dollar Tree DIY, I'm just gonna take this little Dollar Tree kitchen sign, which I actually think is really cute. I'm gonna keep it, um, but I wanted to add this little French um, farmhouse saying. And in fact, if you all are French and you know what this says, definitely comment and let me know. I'm not for sure what it says, but I did get the graphic off of gra graphicsfairy.com. Um, all you guys have to do is just search a French farmhouse and you'll find some really pretty little sayings and sign additions. So I just popped it into this white Dollar Tree frame and I add it into this beautiful little um set up here and I think it's just looking so fun and fabulous. I love this cream and black ticking fabric. I got it from burlapfabric.com but I've also seen it at Walmart if you all need any um, French country kind of curtain or fabric or whatnot. So for the next DIY I'm actually going to upcycle some of these Bath and Body Works candle lids. I'm going to take some of this chalk paint and again I used several different coats. I will suggest that I do like the Waverly chalk paint better than this kilns chalk paint it seems to have a bit more coverage so then once I had my little lids chalk painted I'm going to use some of this Dollar Tree contact paper and I'm just going to trace around the lids what I want to create is a coaster for my living room I cannot wait to redecorate for spring so definitely check back next week for spring decorating I will have a huge DIY video posting as well on Saturday but I'm just going to go ahead and trace around the little contact paper I want it to fit the very top of the lid. I'm just going to add it to the top of the lid. You guys, really the sky is the limit. Originally, I thought I was going to Mod Podge a French graphic onto this, but I spied a little bit of contact paper that I needed to use up. I've been using this pretty much everywhere. I used it in organizing my kitchen and laundry room. I just think it's so pretty and I love the black and white. I think it's so French country um, and just so fun and fabulous. So here is how they look and you can really pop these in anywhere for just a bit of um, black and white pops or um, just somewhere nice for you to set your beverage and it'll be something very pretty and nice to look at and it'll go along with your little French farmhouse chic country theme. Um, a lot of what you all see in my videos, I have a lot of questions um, of different things that you all see and I'm going to tell you pretty much everything is from the thrift store, flea market, or garage sales. So if you're wondering where these extra items are from that we haven't crafted, that's where you're going to find them. <laughs> the thrift store or garage sale. I'm sorry, that's not much help. So for the next Dollar Tree DIY, I'm taking some of those large Easter signs and I'm going to chalk paint the front and back again this did take several coats <laughs> so just be patient with yourself and then once you have those chalk painted you can go ahead and begin distressing them 
I also have to add a side note with these two signs to put them together. I was out of actually popsicle sticks, so I did just use a Dollar Tree love sign that was left over from Valentine's Day. You can just hot glue, add some E6000, and that will keep your two signs together. You could also use popsicle sticks or paint sticks or whatever. So we are going to go ahead and give this kind of an aged look. I went and went starting out with some black paint, and I'm going to just share with you guys kind of how I do layers when I go about distressing a project. I started out with the black paint and then I'm taking some white chalk paint. I'm just going to add a layer over that. You guys can pretty much distress with any colors that you love. I'm going to end up adding another one of the Dollar Tree Easter signs on top of this. I just wanted to give it something fun and fabulous to kind of a frame out. So I do want to think about the colors that are already in that sign, which are kind of some grays and some taupes. So now I'm going in with another layer of gray paint and just again, layering over. So if you need to add in more darker colors, you can add in more blacks. If you want it to look more white, you can just add another wash of white over it but just have fun adding in layers of paint to give it that kind of nice distressed barnwood feel or vintage feel um, I think this is so fun and honestly crafting for me is definitely therapy so try not try not to make it perfect you guys just embrace the imperfections um, in your crafting and continue to go for it So once I had my base boards all just distressed and kind of cool looking, um, I wanted to go back in with the little Dollar Tree Easter sign. I think this is just a, such a fun way to kind of dress up these signs. And so I'm adding in a layer of E6000 glue and I'm adding it to the center part of the board as well to kind of keep it held together just a little bit. Remember it is held together on the back with some extra um, board, but you know, a little bit, I'm a safety girl, a little bit can't hurt. I did add some hot glue so it would adhere instantly and then the E6000 glue will help it adhere temporarily. I'm using some Buffalo check plaid ribbon I had for my craft stash. You can find that at um, Hobby Lobby. And then I'm just gonna pop this cute little bunny bow into the center and how fun and fabulous is this? So this is really going to be really nice. I have a thoughts on where I wanna put this in my home. I wanna use this I think next to my mantle I cannot wait to begin my spring decorating inside my home I have a lot of spring decorating going on in my little crafting studio right now I've been waiting for Valentine's Day is now over so I'll be tidying things up putting all my Valentine's Day away and then adding in loads of spring touches to my home but I am just crushing on this um, springtime French farmhouse French country French chic um, a little look. I added in some shabby chic and so fun. So for the next DIY, I want to share with you guys how to make kind of a floppy scrappy bow. I'm going to make just a lantern bow. So I'm going to take some of this ribbon. This is just ribbon I have in my stash. It came from burlettefabric.com and I'm just going to take some of the striped ribbon and then this really neat netting ribbon. I'll leave a link for burlettefabric.com down below for you guys. The coupon code to get $5 off is Olivia Spring. And so I'm just cutting. These are about 14 to 16 inch pieces, but you'll want to cut your ribbon however long your lantern is. My little lantern really isn't that tall. I like to make extra large bows and I'm going to have to find a taller lantern, but I just really think this one is so cute. And so many of you ask where I found the lantern and it was at the thrift store. So, but for this bow, you're just going to take and you're going to fold your little ribbons in half. It's super easy and you're going to hold them in the center with your finger and just begin to continue to fold them in half. What I love about this bow is is um, it really uses up a lot of extra scrap ribbons. So, so fun, easy, and fabulous. And I love adding all kinds of different textures with the striped ribbon, the buffalo check, um, the little lace ribbon, and then that netting ribbon. I've also seen kind of the netty ribbon um, at Hobby Lobby as well. So definitely check that out and don't be afraid to try some new things. Um, and then I'm just twisting this on with um, some wire. It's just the Dollar Tree floral wire. So you're just gonna twist it on to whatever little project you're going for. 
And then I did go ahead and begin to fluffy out my little loopy bow, scrappy bow. Um, I know there's another name for this, but I just cannot for the life of me remember it. Julie Samaka originated this one over at Southern Charm Reese. Go check her out if you love to make Reese. I definitely adore her. And then I'm just going to add in some greenery. I'm adding dabs of hot glue to the base of my greenery. And then just I'm going to pop it in underneath the bow. So it's more gluing to the bow and really not so much the lantern. Um, you could also twist it on with floral wire, but I find this method seems to be just fine. And just continue to add in whatever springtime colors that you're decorating with and whatever suits your fancy. I just feel like springtime greenery is so nice to use. And recently I've also been crushing on some pops of purple. I think that's so fun and fabulous for spring just to add in the lilacs and the lavender. And I think it gives it also a very French farmhouse, French country feel. So here is how the finished product looked with this little lantern bow. Oh my goodness. And then I have a little Dollar Tree candle popped into there, trying to give my bow just a little bit of extra fluffing. So definitely let me all let me know what colors you guys use for spring. I know a lot of people use greenery, are you using pinks, pastels yet. I'm definitely going, going to go in for my home with a lot of whites and then add some touches of grays, blacks and whites, and then add in my pops of color. As Easter draws near, I'm definitely going to be going for pastels. I love pastels, um, but definitely the French country farmhouse look is speaking to me so much. So for the next DIY, I'm going to share with you guys another sign repaint. So again, this is the Dollar Tree Easter signs. I love them because they're so large and so they make really great base projects if you like to craft and then again I'm just going in with this extra bit of a love sign you can add popsicle sticks add some hot glue in E6000 and it will hold these signs together just perfectly So once I have my little signs put together, I'm adding just a tiny bit of black paint around the edges. I'm not going to distress this one quite as much as I did the last one. The last one, I wanted the bunny sign more to blend in. This one, I want to be more of just a backdrop for the happy Easter sign. So I'm going to use a happy Easter. It's in the crafting section and it is going to be just a plain base of a sign. So something a little bit more subdued and fun without quite all of of the funzy colors. I think that's a fun way to mix in is to use some of the funzy Dollar Tree signs. And then for a little bit more of a classy look, you can um, use some of the more plain signs and then just go in. And I'm gonna use a little bit of white chalk paint mixed in with some black to make just a really pretty French gray. And then I'm just gonna apply this with my little sponge. You could also use a paintbrush. Again, this happy Easter sign is from Dollar Tree. It's in the craft section, the Easter crafts. And use whatever color suits your fancy. You could use pink or greens or yellow or whatever color is speaking to you for your home decor right now. I had a lot of fun with this project. I love these French grays. My mom is really into French grays. So I definitely think she has a lot of influence on some of these French touches that I put into my home. So again, I'm just adding in some E6000. That is going to adhere to my sign really well for a permanent hold. And then the hot glue will a um, adhere to my sign for the long-term hold. It's a really nice mixture and you can layer them on top of each other or just kind of next to each other is what I do. So once you have all that on there, you can just pop it on to your sign. I don't know if you guys noticed, but all of the crafts that I create, I'm pretty much crafting backwards and upside down. So sometimes I notice that my signs can be a little off center. If you really have to have it centered though, you may want to measure on either side and try not to craft backward and upside down. <laughs> So here it is in with this French country farmhouse theme. Oh my goodness, I am so crushing on this. As always, I ask that you all comment and let me know what is your favorite project in this DIY and all of your requests have been heard for more of the French country, French farmhouse, um, shabby chic mixture of a theme. I think you guys can really take all of these elements and mix them in so well. I think you can add touches of romance with laces and 
and scrolly designs and then you can add touches of farmhouse with some of your metals and your grays and your distressed look and then the French country with some of your browns and the distressed and the French themes so just however you all like to combine those I really think that they all kind of transfer together but oh my goodness I'm just so excited to be sharing this with you definitely go check out also the rest of the videos in this I Love Spring series you guys are going to be blown away how we're taking Dollar Tree projects or Dollar Tree items and just making them a little bit more classy and fantastic and fabulous boutique gorgeous on a budget and I so love y'all thank you for being here so thank you all so much for joining me on another fun and fabulous crafty decor adventure and it's a true blessing and honor to have you all here if you all are new welcome I'm Olivia with Olivia's Romantic Comb and I love to craft and decorate on a budget I truly believe that y'all don't have to break the bank to have a fabulous amazing home and hey also I just want to give thanks to everybody that comes back and loves on me and that watches all of my videos and is inspired and is part of my Olivia's Romantic Home community. Thank you guys so, so much. You guys truly, truly mean the world to me. And hey, don't forget to subscribe to this YouTube channel so you can enter my $100 Hobby Lobby gift card giveaway. And also I have an Olivia's Romantic Home Facebook page. I have a free little group page if you guys want to post photos of your home decor and DIY projects. I love to see what everybody's up to and I just want to encourage you guys right now, wherever you're at in your crafting and decorating journey or in your life journey, every Everybody's going through something so keep going you guys keep putting one foot in front of the other give yourself some grace and do your best to love on those around you so I know you guys can do this and if God's given you guys another day um, just remember that that's gonna be a gift so I love y'all I'm hugging all of your hearts so tight pray for one another love on one another and until our next video remember be kind to yourselves and be kind to one another we'll talk to you guys very soon mm -hmm. bye bye